What is up YouTubers and Magic players? We got a video to show you how to splash that additional color into your deck. The second video in this series is about the bathtubs, the third is about pools and public fountains. So I just wanna make sure we're not confused. Let's get into it. Now splashing is when you add a few, a small amount of cards of a different color from the core colors that make up your deck. Typically we're talking in a limited fashion like making a sealed deck or you've drafted a deck and you need to get that third color in to help balance it out or fill some gaps that your other two main colors don't meet. You should only be splashing out of necessity. You don't wanna splash just because you like the way this card looks versus this one. Splashing really can add a lot of inconsistency to a deck, so you wanna make sure you're doing it as effectively as possible and the rewards are worth the risk. So how do you splash? Well, you just throw in a few land of the new color, you hope to draw them, that's all you need to know. Thanks for watching, please subscribe. Peace out. What? No, can we give an actual answer? Can we please give an actual answer? Maybe use some examples, maybe. It was just a joke, dude. Nope, wasn't a very good one, okay? Jerk. What? So for me, splashing is typically done in a limited format because you have a limited pool of cards and the two main colors that you want to play or have decided to play have some type of gap that can be filled with a third color. Like say we don't have enough bombs in the two colors or we don't have enough removal or our curve isn't quite clean enough or consistent enough for us. Or you could just be a glutton for punishment and want to splash four colors or five colors because you just like crazy decks. I admire your bravery. Now we don't just want to add in three, four, five basic lands of that other color and hope to draw it when we need it. Because as we just start throwing in more lands for a small amount of cards, we again keep lowering that consistency. It's a balancing act, there's no getting around it. We have to make sure we are being as effective and efficient and consistent as possible. For example, let's say we're drafting and we're fortunate enough to get a slime foot early on. We have a lot of sapling migration coming our way. We have a really good creature count. We've got a really strong curve. Everything looks good. But unfortunately, our green and black cards are light on removal. But we did get white removal. We've got some blessed lights. Splashing in these white removal cards can make our deck way better. Or another example is let's say we have our Slimefoot deck, but we get a really good card like Tatiova. And I mean, she's phenomenal. She's super strong. The card advantage is just, we can't ignore it. We really want to play her. Or because you think The Little Mermaid is the best Disney movie and you're out to prove it and no one's going to tell you no. You fight that good fight. How do we make sure we're doing this as effectively as possible? This is where we learn about the fun term called mana fixing. Basically cards that fix our mana problem. Mana fixing. Fixes mana problems. Spot on. But why is mana fixing important? When it's done well, it minimizes the sacrifices we've made, like just throwing in a lot of basic lands and hoping it works out. Side note, if you splash cards that have two or three of the splashed color, say like a Jaya Planeswalker, or you want to splash a Sarah Angel, now you're, you've doubled the difficulty of getting this card out because now you need to get two mana sources. So depending on your fixing, this could just be out of the question. It's not unheard of to do, it's just much harder to do well. So using Dominaria as an example, say we're drafting, what cards should we be keeping an eye out for when building our deck? Dual lands are a great place to start because hopefully you've already settled in to one or both of your colors. Now you can use this dual land to hopefully hit that splashed color and now you have a great option without making a sacrifice to your overall mana base. We can also keep an eye out for creatures or spells that allow us to filter mana through them, or they fetch us a card out of our deck so that we can then play it and have access to that mana at any time. So in Dominaria, one of these cards would be Grow From The Ashes. If you're in green and you play this card, you now feel way more comfortable splashing. Great card just in general, really nice for splashing. Another green card would be the creature Lanamore Envoy who can help us filter mana through them to then get the color we want. Now this isn't super efficient because now we have to spend two mana for one. It's also more susceptible to removal because our opponent can just kill the creature and now we've lost our mana fixing. There's also some artifacts available. There's Navigator's Compass, which is definitely not ideal because you're using a card to do nothing but just filter one mana at some point. It gets you three life. Great, not the best play, but it's, it's one of the few options in Dominaria. And last but not least for our list is Skittering Surveyor. I mean, this card has, you might notice if you've done any drafts, how little you see this card. It's just a really nice three drop in general because it thins your deck out. It gets you that card advantage. It triggers historic in this format. It's a decent blocker against a lot of the token generation. Overall, Skittering Surveyor is probably your best mana fixing option in this set. So last but not least, let's discuss how many basic lands should we actually play 
based on the cards we're splashing. Most sources will tell you to go with at least three options for that splashed color. So let's say you're playing one Blessed Light, you should play at least three basic lands or two lands and a mana fixing card, or one basic land and two fixing cards. Three is kind of the rule of thumb that you don't wanna go any lower than three options. Personally, I like to start at just the number four, because now that makes up 10% of my deck is now mana fixing options for the card I'm going to play. And typically I'm splashing more than one card. This also brings me to a point where you don't wanna splash or you should be hesitant to splash cards that are say one or two mana unless there's some really good scalability to them, because if you delay playing it, now it's not gonna be as effective with what your opponent's most likely doing. You've lost value from the card, now you've splashed a third color, you've increased the risk of your deck while minimizing the value that card actually adds. It's, it's a balancing act. I'm not saying there's a perfect formula out there. I'm not trying to deter you from splashing. It is definitely a viable strategy. Sometimes it is the only answer, the only option for you to have that super high power spike or that super high top end to a deck, but we, we, just, we have to stay focused on the consistency and the efficiency and the effectiveness of our deck. There is a lot to keep in mind. I'm sorry there's not like a perfect, here's the answer to do no matter what's going on, but I believe in you. You can definitely figure it out. I really appreciate you watching. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe. Hopefully you found some value in it or at least were entertained, maybe. We'll see you in the next video. Peace. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Okay, easy.